Um, Omegle is a website created in March of 2009 that allows users to have anonymous conversations with random strangers, either through messages or video chats with over 25,000 users on at any given time. After being raised to not talk to strangers, it baffles us, why would anyone use this site? Alright, you wanna go first? You got it. Alright, so my name is Tyler Harp. Um, I am from Grand Haven, Michigan. I'm Daniel Bremer, 19, Grand Haven, Michigan as well. My name is Cole, but a lot of people, especially on the internet, know me by Panda. What's up everyone, I'm Stellar, and I'm an artist. My name is Game Show Guy, I make funny Omegle skits on TikTok. Hi guys, my name is Ben. And uh, I make YouTube videos, mainly on Omegle. I use Omegle to like show people my song. We make TikToks um, from Omegle. We basically go on and we make uh, videos of basically just uh, in a way of just making people laugh. <gasps> Little skies. <laughs> Let's go, dude. That is so uh, One night, about like seven months ago, uh, I was on Omegle and I was with my friends and we ran into this one kid. And I forgot why, but I ended up skipping him the first time. So we kept going, we kept meeting a ton of different people. And eventually we circled back around to that kid, found him again. And keep in mind, there's like 40,000 people on the site at that time. And the chances of us running into each other again were like very low. So this time I decided to stay and I talked to him and he was extremely funny. Like to the funniest person. I made this word by myself. This is an original word made by me. Nobody else. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Tell me about your interests. Uh, spaghetti Diet Coke. <laughs> Secret <laughs> elevator. <laughs> These are the shorts, but if you look closely, you can see my minion boxers. Oh my God. <laughs> I saw the other day you were playing Realm of the Mad God. What's that about? Yes, sir. Did you see that I was playing it for 42 hours straight? <laughs> <laughs> Today, I would consider him one of my closest friends. Um, there was this kid on there that uh, he was streaming Fortnite. Uh, you know, playing Fortnite and stuff. I'm like, oh, dude, that's really cool. What's what's going on? He's like, wow, you're not gonna skip me. I'm like, no, no, man, I'm, I'm interested to see what you're doing. And so he's like, oh, you know, most people just call me the F word and just skip. I'm like, well, that's unfortunate. So, I mean, we we ended up having like a, a heart to heart. You know, the kid was only like 10 years old, and you know, I was giving him advice and whatnot. You know, just let him know that you know those people are only behind a screen you know they can't do anything to you so don't take those words to to heart yeah you know so i mean I, I think just genuine interactions like that and being able to guide someone and help someone through something like that i th think it's uh it's it, it's meaningful to me at least so while there are people on omegle with positive intentions they aren't the only ones on this site there are people who prefer to take a more negative approach yeah, unfortunately, there's a lot of a lot of hate on there, and it gets tiring. Bang. Be a lot of Nazis and a lot of hatred. I've heard many racial slurs, and I'm white, you know. Can't get a white power. I mean, I've definitely heard the N word all the time. People like here and there, where they'll like put like in the comment section of like saying like the N word and stuff. People think I look white, so obviously they don't. Like they don't say any crazy stuff. It's predominantly towards like like black people, you know. They'll people throw around white kids will throw around the N word a lot and just you try to make jokes out of it, but it's really just you know it's not funny. It's very disheartening to see how much negativity and, and hate and evil there is. One time I ran into this little black girl, and the first thing she said to me when she met me was, "Please don't call me the N word." I was just like, I was like, what? And I just felt bad because, you know, she was she was obviously annoyed and hurt by it because someone said it to her before she met me. I think the kids say it to get a reaction out of people and it works and it works because you don't expect a kid to be saying those words or even know what those words mean. You know, it, they don't. They really don't know what those words mean, but they know it gives a reaction out of people when they say it. So I think that's why they do say it. Hey. What? Hello. I'm a what? A what? There are certain people that truly hold those beliefs. 
what really breaks my heart is not when I see a young kid believing in that stuff. What really breaks my heart is when I see a 30, 35 year old, 40 year old who tells me he's a white nationalist and you know, all this stuff. And I'm like, wow, I don't think I can change your mind. And I don't think that you're trying to get a reaction. I think you genuinely believe this stuff. And that's, that's what is the most impactful. That's what's the hardest to, to come to terms with. Of the 37 people surveyed, 56.8% of them say they have faced some sort of act of hatred on the site, ranging from racism to homophobia. To prove how much hatred there is on this site, I decided to go on a Omegle for the first time ever and see how long it would take for me to encounter someone like this. It took four minutes. Yo, what's up? Are you gonna say something? So they take advantage of their anonymity on the site as a way to spew hatred without suffering any consequences to their actions. Or, at least they think they're anonymous. Anyone on Omegle can grab your IP address and find out what city you live in. In fact, it's so easy that all it takes is downloading a Chrome extension. There's definitely a lot of people that do it, and it happens more often than a lot of people think. Sometimes where people will just mess with us and they'll like type on the computer and stuff and be like, I'm gonna get your IP address and stuff. But then there's other times where people will actually be um, looking at our IP and then they'll be like, oh, like you're in like Michigan. I've seen it a lot on TikTok where people go around and like steal people's IPs and be like, oh, well, how's living in Florida or how's living in Michigan, you know, and then say their city and their state on it. It's like that just kind of ruins the fun, in my opinion of going on a online web chat. Pretty much what I do is though, like obviously when I'm looking at someone, I can like look in their eyes and I can see that there's like, they're moving their hands and they're typing stuff and like they're looking all around their screen. And then that's when I know that there's someone's up. So I just skip them. But that happens, that happens fairly often. I would say, you know, there's always guys that are like, oh, how's California? And it's just like, oh, cool. But yeah. I'm in the IT industry. Okay. Um, with your IP, you're able to give a relative area. You're not able to pinpoint. You're able to get like an ISP, which is their internet service provider. You're able to see what you know kind of internet they're using, and you're able to get a general area or location. You're not able to get a pinpoint. Um, there are certain scenarios where that is possible to get a pinpoint location on someone. But if anything, you're just saying their their city, you're saying their state, and that's about it. So. Um, in my opinion, I wouldn't be scared if they know that information because you probably have more information on like your Instagram or your, t you know, your Twitter already readily available for anyone. Um, but it is still kind of creepy because I know there's some internet ser like service providers or if you're using like a personal hotspot or stuff like that, uh, there's different ways that it goes off like geography based. I believe with like if you're using like a mobile phone hotspot because it pings off the near cell tower and if you're near cell tower, it's able to pinpoint like a a much smaller area again it won't just it won't give you a address it'll just give you a probably you know 300 yard radius but if you're in like an apartment complex you're you're pretty much golden but if you're on a cul-de-sac that's a little bit different on top of racism and identity theft omegle is also a place where many people go to conduct non-kid friendly activities now i i've been on omegle for years because i would do these skits for fun even before the whole tiktok hype and the whole tiktok wave when there was maybe ten thousand people on there at any given time now there's over sixty thousand. so a lot of those things are drowned out um but they're still there all the time i see people you know males masturbating i see the signs where it's like you want to play a game you know show me it's to start or wave to start you know it, it, i mean it's just all creepy people also like guys on there who will just you know play with themselves that kind of thing um there's there's just a lot of that going on. There's obviously guys that are trying to get stuff from these females. Uh, I've seen that a lot. I mean, there's nothing wrong if you want to show your dick to people, but like with consent, right? Like you're probably not going to put that in there. And then again, like people will come on and like kind of expect or have that motive of wanting to see something or like like perverts like coming on like asking girls to flash or something like that or mm -hmm. that kind of behavior that we might not see, but I believe is still out there for sure. You give a platform for anonymous video chat with random strangers and you know, you see the true nature 
uh, of our of the at least our society currently. It was a lot more prevalent early, early, early on. I think it was more used as just a way to connect with uh, younger children and for the perverted people on the other end to get their desires. Um, but again, I think it's drowned out more uh, because there's more people on the site and um, they know that they're probably being recorded. Completely messed up people and like perverted people who will go on there and like look for like younger kids. Like there will be online predators like looking for younger kids or teenagers and and they probably know that like the category TikTok or like other categories are popular for younger kids and that like younger generation and they'll go on and have that motive of wanting people to watch them or wanting to see something or sometimes you know I'm I'm flipping through people um you know male genitalia after male genitalia and then there's a live stream of someone streaming child pornography you know it, it, it's disgusting and the fact that you know they aren't able to monitor that kind of stuff it, it's kind of weird and I don't think it's responsible for the website at all yeah it's sad to see but it's there of the 37 people surveyed, 73% of them claim to have faced some sort of sexual harassment on the site. And if you thought it couldn't get any worse than racism, homophobia, and harassment, you thought wrong. We've spent hours researching about Omega trying to find the worst stories and events from it, and it didn't take long for us to find one that's just truly awful. The infamous cat killer, a lady who'd anonymously show people her collection of cat skulls and skin cats on Omega. However, the situation was disregarded as rumor because no one believed it to be true until a group of people got together and shared everything they knew about the situation on the subreddit r slash don't fuck with cats. Still, many people couldn't differentiate the truth from rumors which led to an innocent person's house being raided, but people were still determined to find out who she was. After an intricate investigation, people were able to use her alias accounts to find her real accounts. Because all the pictures she used in social media were fake, the only way individuals could identify her was by seeing what she looked like through Omega. Once she realized people were figuring out her identity, she went on several live streams where she allowed people to confirm who she was, what she was doing, and where she was. After they accurately found out her location, they informed the local authorities, which led to her arrest soon after. Yeah, that I mean, that just goes to show you that, you know, people they, people want publicity. They want people's reactions, you know, and they'll go do whatever they want to do to get that that feeling, you know, of people like how they reacted to that. In that lady's situation, it just turns out to be skinning cats and dogs to get people's reactions, you know, and I guarantee that's what she craved and that's what she wanted and that's what she got. But she's paying the price for her now because that's that's beyond fucked up. <laughs> that's just, that's, that's horrible. You know, you always, there's, I've seen stuff like that before on, on the site where it's like, it's not to that extent, but it's, it's pretty crazy. It's like some people, they'll put videos up on the screen of like people killing themselves, like, like actually like shooting themselves. And um, that stuff is horrific. Anywhere that you give people anonymity and the ability to communicate, you see the true like colors of the world around you. 